fact, it's probably a two-seater. I like a lot of style. I want a, a car that can perform, you know, some uh, 70 vet, you know, 427, high-rise manifold, and yards. Oh, I look at conditioning. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, that's my car, my car, my car. Well, I could look good in any car, really. <laughs> <laughs> car. Well, I like something nice and roomy and comfortable. A small economy car. I want I just want a car that runs good and that looks good and it's fast and it stays on the road good, yeah. <laughs> but cars that look like winners on the outside can really be losers on the inside. I bought it on a Friday. By Saturday morning, the clutch started slipping. By Monday morning, when I was going to work, I couldn't even drive the car. The clutch was completely gone. I had the car about another week, and the engine started knocking. And I always had trouble starting it. The starter was bad. And it, I needed a new water pump. And the carburetor was not right. And it was overheating constantly. And the headlights were out. And well, the original deal, they promised me six good tires with the car. When I got it home, the two tires in the trunk were bald. And the brakes just barely passed inspection. After I had the car, about two weeks, I had to replace the brakes all the way around. I paid about fifteen fifty for it, and I've put about $650 into repairs, and then there's the loan finance charges. So I've got about, I'd say, 2500 into it right now. And here it's sick. It's not even running anymore. The first thing to think about is what kind of car you really need. In general, souped-up cars, sports cars, and convertibles cost more than plain sedans, and they're usually more likely to give you trouble. Chances are such cars have been driven hard by their previous owners and mechanically are not in the best condition. Even cars that have been in bad accidents can be made to look good. Many cars get a facelift before they're put up for sale. Some shops may even spray the car with something called new car smell. Dealers will pay to make the cars look good because they can get a better price. They're usually less willing to pay for mechanical repairs. The belief is what you can't see won't hurt sale. But you don't really have to be an expert to weed out the lemons. There are simple tests you can do right on the used car lot that will tell you some of the car's worst problems. So at least you know which cars to avoid. In this test, each corner of the car should bounce up and down, but should stop bouncing quickly when you let go. If it doesn't, as in this case, you need new shock absorbers, and that can cost you quite a lot. In this test, you shake each front wheel hard, in and out at the top. If the wheels feel loose or clunk, the wheel bearings or the suspension joints may be worn out. Also check the tires, tire treads that are worn unevenly like this, I mean the front wheels are out of line and sometimes repairs can be costly. Also, look under the car for signs of leaks. No used car will pass every test, but some repairs cost less than others. Keep a list of every problem you find. Afterward, ask a mechanic how much each item would cost to fix. By adding up those figures, you can tell how much the car would really cost and whether it's worth the price. Inside the car, check the brake system. Push steadily on the brake for about one minute. If the pedal sinks slowly, there's probably a leak. Now turn on the ignition. Listen for loud or strange noises. They can be signs of trouble. Meanwhile, check the instrument gauges and try out all the controls. Be sure to check the lights from the outside of the car. If after all the on-the-lot tests you still like the car, it's time to drive it. And not just once around the block. Plan to spend about a half hour on the road. You'll probably have to leave some security with the dealer. But don't sign anything unless you know what you're signing. If you leave a deposit, make sure that doesn't commit you to buying the car. Radio, these are, of course, your signals right here. 
your horn. Hopefully it works. You're all set. That's it. That's all. Okay. Just a, okay. Just a little while. If the dealer refuses to let the car out, look elsewhere. Pick a quiet area with little traffic for your test. You can try the transmission starting off, and you can feel when the gears change. They should be smooth. You shouldn't get any jerking or slamming or loud clunk. And one thing you should always do is to check the transmission in reverse. Many people don't do that. Now that slams a little bit, but not bad. Make sure that it goes smoothly backwards. No clunk, no groan. Start off forward. Everything seems to be pretty good. To test the brakes, find a safe place to make a few quick stops from a speed of about 45 miles an hour. The car shouldn't swerve, and the brakes shouldn't grab, squeal, or make clunking noises. Brake repairs are usually expensive. To see how well the car steers, make a couple of right and left turns. The wheels should be easy to turn, and there shouldn't be any grinding or squealing noises. Next, drive at a moderate speed for about a quarter of a mile, and then slow down. When you reach about 25 miles per hour, step hard on the accelerator. Blue smoke means the engine probably needs new piston rings, a very expensive job. If the smoke is black, it probably just means the fuel mixture is too rich, a minor repair. Even after you've done all the road tests and all the on-the-lot tests, is it enough? I bought the car two months ago, and after I had it home, I began experiencing difficulty with the steering. When I make a complete turn, I can feel the whole front end vibrate, including the steering column itself. And according to the first garage I took it to, I shouldn't be driving it. The car is definitely dangerous and shouldn't be on the road. So then I took it to another station, and they confirmed the same thing. And I found out that the car that I that I had bought was once totally wrecked and was not in any condition to be repaired. Well, first thing I'll do is road test it myself, and then I'll find out if I get permission to take it to my mechanic, let him check it out before I even buy anything, you know, because if you, you know, go ahead and say, well, I'll take it and drive out here, something's wrong with it, after that, you're stuck, you know. So first I'll take it and definitely get it inspected all the way before I even buy it. If they don't want to do that, then I'll go somewhere else and buy a car, and that's all. Once you've found a car you want, have it checked by a reliable garage or independent mechanic. The mechanic can check such things as cylinder compression and brakes, and look for oil leaks and old repairs that might indicate the car had been in a bad accident. The cost is about $15 to $30, a reasonable price to avoid getting a lemon. My father was pretty impressed with the car. He also told me that I should take it to uh, a mechanic who's a friend of his. And uh, the mechanic looked the car over when I test drove it and said that uh, he thought the engine was in pretty good shape, but that I ought to have a few minor things done to it before I uh, you know, went ahead and purchased it. And he said that the uh, car dealer should be willing to go ahead and do those things for you before they uh, sell you the car. They gave me uh, four new tires and uh, something that I didn't expect. I, when I got back, I opened the trunk and there were some uh, snow tires in, in the back. They put those in there for me. I asked them uh, to replace the spark plugs, put new points in. They did all that. They uh, gave me a new battery. They, uh, also, there were some leaks, and they signed in writing that they would uh, you know, repair any leaks that I discovered after I had purchased it, and I did discover a few. And so I, the reason I came to pick it up today was to uh, get the uh, floor. They repaired the floor, and uh, so everything seems to be going pretty well. They did all this for me, though. No extra charge or anything. It's also a good idea to look up the repair history of the car in Consumer Reports Annual Auto Issue or in its annual buying guide at the library. It's one of the best ways there is to predict possible trouble spots in a used car before you buy. Your chances of finding a used car in good condition are better at some places than at others. Some of the most tempting deals are the ones offered by private sellers but they're usually the most risky. You won't get a warranty, you'll probably have to pay cash, and you may get a car that really is a steal. 23 or 24 miles a gallon, depending upon what kind of driver. If you suspect the car was stolen, ask your local police to run a check on the car's vehicle identification number. You can find the number by looking in through the windshield on the driver's side. 
before I go to the bank, can I just see the title? And don't hand over any money until you get the legal title and bill of sale. If you do wind up with a stolen car, you could lose the car and the money. The most important thing is to buy from someone reliable. Your best bet is to try a new car franchise dealers or used car dealers who have a solid reputation in the community. Ask around and look for dealers who have large service facilities and will give a written warranty. Such places may charge more for their cars, but you're less likely to get stuck. I didn't get anything in writing. Just that I bought the car and how much I paid for it. That was it. He verbally promised me that a few things would be done to the car before I took it home, and I asked him to put them in writing, and he said that it wasn't necessary because he promised me that his word was really solid. However, I found out I should have gotten him in writing because what he had promised me and what he did were two different things. If the dealer promises anything, get it in writing. If the sales slip says, as is, it means you've agreed to take the car in its present condition, and you'll have to pay for all the repair. The best warranty is the one that will pay the full costs of parts and labor. Dealers aren't likely to give this kind of warranty on cars they know are bad. If you do get stuck, you may be able to get some of your money back by going to small claims court or to your state division of consumer fraud. You may also try the action line of your local newspaper, radio, or TV station. They may be of some help. But as far as the car goes, you know, it depends on what equipment you want. Is it, you know, set that equipment in a price range that you want? Well, I'll do something like $1,500. Yeah. Yeah. You better look at another car. <laughs> hey, let me show you another car. That might be in Once you've found the right dealer and the right car, how do you know what's a fair price? The National Auto Dealers Association publishes a used car guide which lists average prices for various used cars. But it's only a guide and the price listed has to be adjusted for the mileage and condition of the car you're interested in. Using this price and the list of repairs on your car, you should be able to come up with a ballpark figure. Copies of the guide can usually be found in bank loan departments or at credit unions. When you're ready to talk price, take a friend with you for moral support. People who sell used cars may not know much about engines, but they do know how to sell. You might just find yourself being talked into a car you might not otherwise consider. Well, as far as the price goes, don't even worry about that. The only thing I'm interested in is kind of putting you on a car. If you like the car, don't worry about the price. I'll work right. something out with you. Okay. Why don't we take it off for a ride and see how you like it? Good idea. Yeah. I can't Good tell you the time I should buy it. We took a look at it, and about a half hour later, I put down a $40 deposit on it. Next day, I went to the bank and got a loan out. By Friday night, I had the car on the road and was driving it. I was very excited about it. I liked it so much. I guess I rushed into it too fast, though. I should have took a look at it a few more times before I bought it. You can save money buying a used car. But first, there are a lot of things to check out. It's much better to eliminate the clunkers when they're still in the dealer's yard, not yours. So you go into the store. You don't see what you want to say more. With millions of used cars on the market, you don't have to get stuck with a letter.